Well, hello. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this fantabulous, fantabulous, supreme Saturday. Supreme Saturday. That's a new one, isn't it? Don't we you normally say stupendous? I don't know. Anyway, you're looking absolutely stupendous today. And look, we are going to be going down a little bit of a rabbit hole um, and talk about one of these baseless speculations. <laughs> and I say baseless for a reason, because it's quite interesting. When you're in the true crime space, and you're talking about these crimes, all the people who are kind of balls deep in the guilt of, you know, the main, the main antagonist of the story, the person who the law enforcement and the media have pushed up front and centre, because it's very difficult for people to think beyond what the sheep, the herd, does. And it's people even perhaps want to be kind of outliers and think, you know what, things don't quite sit right, but I must be wrong because all of that crowd of people over there, you know, they're, they're over there. So surely that's that over there is the place to be. And what they'll say, the people who are in the crowd, is that the people who have an opinion that isn't matching theirs, they will turn around and use phrases such as conspiracy theorist, or they'll turn around and say that, it's a baseless rumour or baseless speculation. I even had someone in the comments, when we've been talking about Brent Kopacker recently, and they've turned around and said, you've raised Brent Kopacker up, but it's baseless. You've got nothing to base that on. And I think to myself, right, so let's just think over the last few days. Brent Kopacker, for instance, came straight out of Judge John Judge's mouth. Straight out of his mouth. Now, this is in the middle of a court heron, which is about... Frank, Brian Kopacker. Brian Kopacker. <laughs> Brian Kopacker. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's that easy. But you've got to have someone. The point of that, that there, what you just saw, was a perfect example of when people say people's names in accent because they're thinking about them. So it got me to thinking. It got me to thinking, do you know what? Why would Judge John Judge, in the middle of a court hearing where he is supposed to have his full attention on what is going on, what's going on around him, and this is about Brian Koberger and the Ido 4, what fuck, in what world would he be thinking or having to think about Brent Kopacker? Whatsoever. Absolutely whatsoever. What would have to be, why would he be there? So when someone turns around and they say, dinner, what, I think there's a potential that Brent Kopacker was perhaps close to this. Whether he was, it was as simple as he was friends with Brian Koberger. Maybe he, he, he spent time with Brian and through spending time together, that's how Brian Koberger was able to learn about the K-Bar knife, how to use it, so on and so forth. Maybe it was as simple as that, but to say Brent Kopacker had nothing to do with it, I feel that's a bit of a stretch to turn around and say that that is simply a it's simply baseless speculation. I know the guy was in the military. I know he was Purple Hearts and all that. And, you know, I, I respect him for that. But, like I said in the video before, just because someone was a fucking hero and is a hero, died a hero, doesn't mean that there's a potential for them to have done something or been involved in something heinous. And, he, and again, it might have been that he didn't even realise what he was doing and maybe that is what spiralled him into what resulted in his death. Maybe he realised that his interactions with Brian Koberger were, were where it led and maybe he felt some sense of guilt towards what happened and some involvement in it. Tell me 100% that you would, if you had skin in the game and you had to bet your children's lives on it, you couldn't turn around and say, do you know what, you're talking shit. Talking shit, 100%. It, because I can't buy it. I can't buy it that you you can 100%. But anyway, look, the reason for, you've seen the thumbnail, and I've, I've gone on a massive tangent, but the point of this video is about regarding the cops and could the cops like loads of people message me and they're like the cop the cops did this this is the cops you're looking in the wrong place you're looking at the wrong things this is this was the cops i thought for a long time this just didn't hold weight this didn't really hold weight and then i thought to myself do you know what in a, in a way it, it makes <laughs> probably the most sense than anything else brian Koberger, the outlier 
versus the police who, like, I'll, I'll tell you how it started. It started by me thinking, who the fuck had it in for these kids? Do you know what I mean? Who had it in terms of the fact that there was all these complaints all the time? Who was complaining all the time? And the police turned up and taking details off the phone and acting like they did and what we've seen in the cameras. That we know that they were around the area that night. We know that they are interacting with people. Now, I thought to myself, if, something, if, if a cop was involved, they would have known Brian Koberg was in the area. They would have known there was a white Honda Elantra in the area. And, and I thought to myself, Ann Taylor has never said it because there's some thick motherfuckers about. Ann Taylor has obviously said, or people are losing their shit saying, oh, Ann Taylor's fucked up saying that Brian Koberg was in the area. Well, Ann Taylor never said he weren't in the area. Ann Taylor said he weren't in the area at the time that the crime happened. And this is where people lose their shit, do you know what I mean? Because they, they listen, but they only hear what makes sense to their narrative. So, with respect of the, the Brian Coburg situation, the Ann Taylor situation, Ann Taylor had always stuck with the, he wasn't in the area at the time of the crime, he was driving around. And we know that she's currently waiting for phone data to, from the FBI. So... <laughs> It's not that Ann Taylor said Brian Koberger weren't there in, ter uh, in terms of Moscow, Idaho. He, she never said that. She never said it. But I think to myself, if, if a cop saw that car, saw him, that, would that explain why they seemingly had this car so early on? And they did need to reverse manufacture this all the way. Like, why the knife sheath wasn't found on the first walkthrough, it was found in the second walkthrough. If they knew that Brian Cobo, or they knew who that was very early on, it would have been easy for a police officer to get hold of DNA to put on a knife sheath. They would have known where he lived or where his car was and been able to get skin samples off of a fucking door handle, for instance, to put it on a sheath and then make it a pair that the sheath was found during that time. So it does hold weight. It's a stretch. It's a stretch, granted, but it holds weight. So I understand why some people are turning around saying, this was a cop who did this. Because when you factor in some of the things around the case, and the fact that Brent Kopaka, for instance, maybe I've also toyed with the idea that the, the, the cops knew that Brian Koberg was involved in it because Brent Kopaka was part of it. And that's why they know that this isn't going to be a recurrence because Brent Kopaka was something to do with it and they knew that he was working with someone that was Brian Koberger and they just knew they just knew whether I don't know I don't know I don't know and but what made me do what made me laugh is when I was looking at some I looked at some stuff earlier I was looking at some um, news reports and they were talking about it was that the guy who's Brent Kopaka's friend and he was saying about um, the fact that this niche had spoken about Brent Kopaka and Pete was going again down this baseless fucking thing you know this baseless speculation and then they went on to say that you know that he had uploaded pictures of um, coordinates on his social media and people had speculated as to whether that was where the weapon was kept perhaps or something like that but then his family pulled the social media accounts down afterwards and I think to myself again rumors and speculation aren't baseless if there was something there in the first place that would have made people go hold on a second what's going on there Brent Kopaka was killed a few weeks after this happened had talked about roommates being in danger or you know, I'm gonna kill the roommates or you know someone could have been paraphrased and he could have been talking about roommates who were murdered and and again maybe he was involved and he was there was some some guilt there some guilt and that's what sent him spiraling but anyway the the point of the the entire point of this was really to touch on the fact that with regards of this case if Brian Koberger didn't do it someone else did that's as simple as that. So you either got to rest on your laurels and be like, Brian Koberg is the man, he did it. There's no other version of events that need to be looked at, talked about, or even thought about, because he's just the one who did it. He's the one who did it. But if you're not, if you can turn around and say, do you know what, he's not been proven guilty yet. He hasn't. And there is work to be done in order to do that beyond a reasonable doubt. And you've got to think what sort of person do you want to be do you want to be the sort of person who condemns someone before they've been proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and have a bit of an open mind and understand that there could be things gone wrong because it happens all the time and it's happened in the past and people lose their the, the, the decades and decades of their life to later be proven wrong 
is this that kind of story and we talk about plant and of evidence and things like that this is where if a cop did this it is feasible to think that it could have been that way that a cop did do it or cops did do it I'm not saying that's the top, the, the top of my thought but what I'm saying is you can't rule that out you can't turn around and say that isn't absolutely no possibility of that being the case you simply can't are we saying that no cop has ever killed or done anything bad look at the UK case of Wayne Cousins it's now coming out now more about Wayne Cousins that he did more and more stuff and the way that the police the Met police had dealt with that and the things that they were talking about then they, they knew what this guy was doing it's absolutely horrendous so don't tell me that cops don't do fucking bad things because cops do there are some amazing ones there's some shit ones and there are some fucking dangerous ones look into the history books just because someone is in a place of authority or a job where you think that you're there someone who is there to make you safe it don't always mean so and being a cop in the idaho force situation on the grander scheme of things makes a hell of a lot of sense for this to be closer to law enforcement especially when it comes to that knife sheath seemingly being the fucking golden goose and now there being a problem with the the chain of you know chain of custody to show exactly how they got there seems that they're struggling and are they going to get away with it by simply saying that well we don't need to tell you it's it's just keeping people's details safe we don't need to give you that information is that going to wash we're going to wash with you let me know down below and at the moment if you're not a brian koberger is guilty person again let me know who you think did it and if you if you are a brian koberger 100 percent did this again i ask you again let me know down below what makes you 100 percent certain that he did and see if you can convince me and i'll catch you all tomorrow